today. In the context of the De Department of Communication, I did a study with my colleague, Elad Segev, on uh, the countries most mentioned in other countries' news sites. Today, everything is digital, so we could collect a tremendous database over years uh, of countries mentioned by other countries. Number one, as anyone would expect, is the United States. Uh, eight, about 18% of all mentions in the world press in countries outside the United States are about the United States. Number two is not China, not Russia, not England, Israel, which is mind boggling because it's a small, unimportant, relatively unimportant country uh, from many standpoints. Actually, we did more in that study. We did a regression I mean, we have like about in scholarship, there are about between 20 and 25 criteria for what makes a country prominent in world news. GNP, size of population, one can go on. There are like 25 categories. And when and countries are mentioned pretty much the way they're scored in these 20 plus categories, except for two outliers, which are way out of uh, where they should be. One is the United States mentioned, overly mentioned. And that I think is easy to explain. When you're number one, it's a completely different kind of standard. I mean, you're, number one is number one. So you get a lot of attention than Israel. And here I think the issue is, uh, why would Israel be so prominent, so out of place, so, so dominant? Number two in world news, a small country in the Middle East, uh, and I think it's because in many ways, Israel uh, and its problems and its struggles represent something extremely essential uh, in the world, in the condition and the situation of the world today. It is known for its conflict uh, with the Palestinians, with the Arab world. And in many ways, that conflict stands for all the problems the world faces, the, the dilemmas separating North and South, we call it, East and West, um, the new countries, old countries, ancient countries. It, it, it's like a hotbed of all the most essential problematics of our world today. So that was a general pitch saying why one is studying Israel studies is really getting a mic, is looking at a microcosm. It's, it, it, we're deliberating the question whether this is like a, a colonialism or post-colonial truth, or on the other hand, the struggle of civilizations. We're looking at the essence, at, at a parable for world conditions when we study Israel studies. So that's a pitch for Israel studies. And now I want to zero in uh, on doing Israel studies in Israel. And not only in Israel, but in Jerusalem, uh, which is like not only the capital of Israel, but it, it's the foundational st rock stone of religions, of history, of spiritual life uh, in the world. There's nothing more essential than Jerusalem. So if you want to study about these essentials, no other place, no better place to do it than in Jerusalem. Hebrew University, as you heard in the earlier phases of this orientation, is one of the top universities in the world. And we have tremendous how many years of experience, Naomi? About 50 years or 60 years of teaching Israel to people from all over mm -hmm. the world. So maybe uh, after that very general introduction, maybe I'll zoom, we'll go into the slides. Naomi, if you want to help us with it. And here we'll be a little more orderly about the program and about its rationale. So welcome, Israel Studies. So we just said we're on site, but it's an in-depth opportunity uh, to discover, to learn the complexities of uh, Israel, uh, its social problem, its geopolitical issues, its religious scene. Uh, but there are other aspects to Israel too, not only its conflict and not only its past and not only its religion, but its unbelievably rich cultural life uh, we're talking music, we're talking food, we're talking, and Bennett can tell you more about this because I was born in Jerusalem and grew up here, so I don't really see what's unique about it, but uh, I think seeing it from the outside really uh, provides some 
uh, can really give you maybe the essence uh, of it. Uh, now our program, mm -hmm. and here are a few more words about the program specifically. Yes, it's one year, you do a master's in one year and you're supposed to grasp Israel, which is so complex, which is so multifaceted. And the way we try to accomplish that is by two things. One, we have core courses. We have courses that everyone takes that, give, that are expected to give students fundamentals. And that is Israeli history. That's one of the core, one of the four core courses, Israel, his, Israel history, Israel society, Israeli politics, and then geography of Jerusalem, which is also historical geography, which is also the place itself. So those are our core programs. And we give you a tremendous variety of elective courses that you can take to enhance whichever path you find most interesting into the knowledge and, and the most attractive aspects to you of the Israeli experience, Israeli conflicts, Israeli problems, Israeli issues. Um, we talked about the, experience, the unique experience of Jerusalem. And as I said, we try to accomplish and we have a good history of success in achieving all this within one year. So maybe Nomi, next slide. Um, so again, Israel is big on the world scene in any number of ways, in innovation, in high tech, in world politics, uh, in world religion, in archaeology, in history, in any way you look at it, uh, there are very important and essential things to learn about Israel. So we get students from all kinds of uh, backgrounds to study in the program from any number of countries. And here's what they do when they leave, and you can see it in front of you. Of course, we try, we're an academic institute, and we try to perpetuate ourselves. And since we're academics, that's what we best know how to do is teach how to do academics. So our students continue in academia, but also more broadly in research and policy. And you see the list, law and advocacy and writing and the arts. I myself, as I say, come from the communication department, communication and journalism, uh, government. Many students end up in public service and government service and the foreign uh, service. Uh, tourism. And again, this is startup nation. There's a lot happening in the innovation and high tech uh, background, uh, environment around you and people get caught up into this. Uh, more slides, Nomi, or is that it? That's it. That's it. Okay. So, uh, next will be Bennett, Nomi, and then, quest and then you, questions. Bennett, over to you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Bennett. I am a, uh, a student at the master's, in the master's program. And um, having only so far completed the autumn semester, I, I am, I'm already looking forward to the spring. I'm, um, I'm, I've, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been everything that I have hoped it to be. And living in Jerusalem is, um, is quite an experience. And I'll talk a little bit about what it's like to be a student here. And then I'll try to speak a little bit about living in Jerusalem as well. Um, I live off campus. I live in the city. So I can speak um, a little bit to living in the city as a student. What um, street, Bennett? I live in Rahavia. I live uh, a, a, a very small street off of Aza Street in, in Rahavia. What street? Uh, it, it's a very small street called Aluf Simhoni, a very small uh, cul-de-sac sure, almost. Sure. Yeah, sure. So. Um, they, my classmates and I, we come from all different backgrounds and all over. Um, I actually, this is my second master's, so I'm coming in with a little bit of an academic uh, graduate experience, but um, most of my classmates are coming right from their undergrad. Um, we also have people who are working professional jobs in the class. We have uh, two gentlemen who are diplomats and they're pursuing the course. Uh, we have people who are volunteering uh, here in Israel and doing the course on the side. So it, it is a wide range of people from all different professional and academic backgrounds. Um, my interest is actually in art history, but uh, we have people who are interested in politics, interested in military history, interested in anthropology, interested in music. Uh, so this program really touches on everything to do with Israeli society. 
Um, it will give a, a very thorough introduction to the political, the sociological, and the cultural background of modern Israel from the foundation of the state in, in the, uh, the early 20th century, all the way up until today, the current um, cultural conflicts going on and also the current uh, military conflict going on. So it gives you a really good grounded base into um, what the idea of Israel is. And those are the those pretty much are the four core classes that Professor Blondheim talked about. And then we have a, a variety of electives to choose from. And it can be anything from music and politics, it can be archaeology, it can be wider Middle Eastern or Islamic studies. So the electives really is a is a um, a variety to choose from outside of the core classes from the Israel studies. And it is quite rigorous. Um, it is it, the professors expect all of us to be doing uh, graduate work for a master's degree. So th there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of writing. Um, there's not a whole lot of week by week work. It's the, the main um, routine is pretty much a lot of reading in order to prepare for class, in order to contribute to, to class discussion. And then some professors do require some writing throughout the, the semester, but mostly um, a lot of the, the hand in work you'll do will be a final, like a final paper or a final exam at the end of the semester. So the bulk of the work is reading and, um, and also contributing to the class, being prepared to contribute to the, the classroom discussion. Uh, a lot of my classmates come from, we come from all over. There are a lot from the US and from Europe, but we have some from um, East Asia, Central Asia, South America, uh, a few from Canada, and I think even a few from Africa as well. Um, so it really is a wide variety and people are coming from different perspectives. People are coming from their own uh, different cultures. So it really does make for great classroom discussion. And, uh, and we're all there to learn about Israel. So. It's a, um, it becomes kind of like a tight knit group. I mean, I know everybody's face. If I see them in the hallway, I stop and say hi. We, after about week four or five, we all kind of become like, a, we have a, a chat group, WhatsApp chat group, and we all kind of touch, keep up with each other and make sure we're okay. And, and uh, if we're running late or someone's sick, we all kind of watch out for each other. So it does become a little bit of a, a tight knit group, uh, especially by the end of the fall semester. Um, so I, like I said, I live off campus, but I have heard from a lot of my classmates who live in the student village that they're very happy. Um, it's very basic. It's comfortable. A lot of them kind of make it home for themselves. You get uh, the basic amenities, but they, um, you know, by now about halfway through the year, they've kind of made it home. Um, they've turned it into their own little home. They've gotten to know their, the, the dorm mates and the roommates that they live with. Um, the good thing about the student village is it is quite close. So if you're not looking to travel a lot and if you're looking to be able to maybe walk to and from class, that is a, is a great option. It's also very economical um, depending on your budget. Uh, but I do live in a neighborhood called um, Rahavia. And so I live kind of in a nice cultural neighborhood of Jerusalem. Um, I take a bus to and from class every day. So I'm kind of like a commuter. I'm, 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 I'm with everybody else going to work. You kind of get the feel of the city. Um, my bus passes right, right through um, Ben Yehuda Street and, and Jaffa Center, which is kind of the, the center of town. So sometimes I'll just get off on the bus and walk around or walk home. So um, just to kind of remind myself that I'm living in Jerusalem, which is such a unique city. And uh, so whether you live on campus or whether you're in the student village or whether you live um, you know, off campus in, in a neighborhood, both ways you can kind of still experience Jerusalem. The uh, Mount Scopus is very central with bus lines or they're constantly buses and the tram is, is nearby that you can hop on and be um, anywhere in the city from Mount Scopus or anywhere in the city from the student village. So you don't have to live off campus um, if you want to kind of have a Jerusalem experience. You can, you can do that easily with the public transportation. Um, I would say that I, I was lucky. I, I knew someone here who could set me up with a, a place to live and um, kind of skip the whole, you know, shopping around to find an apartment. It is quite tricky, but I know that Rothberg especially has a lot of social media groups that set up if you're looking for a roommate off of campus or if you're looking for 
um, I think they have a Facebook group or something where you can connect with people who are also looking for roommates off of campus um, if you do want to live outside the city. Uh, I, I think you asked me what the class size was. I just saw a, a message. Um, I, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking off the cuff here. I think our, I think my group size is probably 12 or 15 people. Um, that that is that is the MA group. The classes are a little bit bigger because a lot of our core classes are electives for other programs. So you're going to meet people from other programs as well. And likewise, a lot of the electives that we can choose from are the core required classes for, let's say, Middle Eastern studies or archaeology and the Bible study. So you're going to meet, you're going to mingle with people from pretty much everyone in Rothberg uh, from the other uh, major groups. You're going to uh, probably see most people's faces or be in some kind of class with someone from Middle Eastern or archaeology in the Bible, because those are all very closely tied to Israel studies. So class size, maybe 15 to 20 people. The MA group is about, uh, you probably know better, but it's about 12 to 15. Um, so that, that's pretty much a, a, a good overview of, of um, life as a student and life in Jerusalem. Um, one more thing too to add is that by being a student at Rothberg, you're, you're not just um, isolated to Rothberg. You have access to all of the Mount Scopus campus. Um, it's a huge library. It's like a six, six story library on Mount Scopus and you have access to all of that. And there are cafes in, all over the campus. It's a beautiful view, a beautiful view overlooking the city. Um, you also have access to the Givat Ram campus, which actually I'm sitting in the Herman Science Library now working on a, a final paper. So you're not restricted to just um, Rothberg and you're not restricted just to Mount Scopus. You, um, you have access to all of the Hebrew University um, facilities, both in Givat Ram, which is downtown and Mount Scopus. Um, and the National Library here is here in Givat Ram as well with the archives. So there are um, a plethora of, of resources and libraries and places to go and study. So you don't feel like you're just in one building the entire time. Um, it really is what you make of it. It, it. Some people just stick to the one Rothberg building, but I think by about middle of the autumn semester, we've all realized there's a bigger world out there. We can, we can go to another campus or another part of the campus. Um, and, and that kind of creates a social network as well. You know, we all like in our group chat, we can, meet up at a certain library or get coffee break if we're all at one library or, or whatever. Um, so it, it, is a, it is a, by being a, a Rothberg student, you're really kind of part of the larger Hebrew University uh, family and you can use the facilities and it, it, it's amazing. Um, I, I've, I did my undergrad in the States and I, I did a, a master's before this in, in the UK in London. And I will say that, um, Hebrew University is, is up to par. It, it's an amazing university. The facilities are great. Um, you're gonna get something, you're gonna, it's one of the best in the world. Uh, they don't, they don't just, that's not just a marketing tool when they say it, it really is on par with uh, the universities in the US and the UK that I'm familiar with. Okay, well, thank you so much, Bennett. That was great, really, sure. thank you. Um, before we open it up to questions, I'm gonna to touch briefly on some administrative um, issues. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so um, in terms of cost, which is obviously a very important question, um, the tuition is $11,400. That's for the year. Um, we do have scholarships available. Jane touched on them earlier that we have merit scholarships and also need based scholarships. Um, and the earlier you apply, the more likely the chance that scholarships will be available to you. Um, the application deadline is actually March 31st, um, and we will accept late applications, but it's on a whatever's available, space available um, basis. Um, in terms of application, I put the web address in the chat. It's also here, as you can see. Um, you need to have a bachelor's degree from an accredited university with a minimum of a 3.2, which is a B average, um, or the equivalent. Um, in terms of your English, you have to have a TOEFL score um, of 80 or above or an IEL, IELTS exam of six or above. Um, we also request that you provide a CV, um, statement of purpose and two academic recommendations. 
Um, the admissions team here is amazing and I'll sort of walk you through the process. So nothing you need to remember or worry about now at this point. Okay, um, student life, um, as Bennett touched on and Jane touched on and Edan touched on earlier in the presentation, um, there's an amazing support system for our students outside of academics. Um, they have a great group of community organizers that organize trips around Israel, lectures, um, weekend activities, as um, Idan mentioned, they're going to the to Engedi in the Dead Sea this weekend. Um, there's Shabbat and holiday meals um, and a buddy system. So international students can hang out with Israeli students and form relationships with the locals. Um, as Bennett mentioned, um, we have on-campus housing available um, in our student village, which is a couple of minutes away from the Mount Scopus campus. Um, they're sort of apartment style residences with um, private bedrooms. So everyone has their own bedroom, but a shared kitchen and living area. Um, and that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Do you want to unmute yourself so we can hear you, Philip? Sorry, you're muted, we can't hear you. Mostly talking talking about uh, hello. I'm Philip from uh, Amman, Jordan. Uh, nice to meet I got you. I got nice to meet. I got my PhD from Spain in 2016, and I do my research in media and communication. But I'm interested in something uh, uh, in demystifying the reason why the Palestinians um, fled the 1948 war and uh, went to other countries. So it's a kind of uh, socio-anthropological study. Uh, um, it's an Israeli study, I think, uh, at the end of the game. But I, 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 I'm looking for a postdoctoral fellowship. Is this where I'm supposed to be, the right room or no? A postdoctoral fellowship? Yeah. No, you're way too advanced for us. We're still the master's program. Master program, OK. I but see. why don't you write me, and I'll try to help. Uh, where did you do your doctorate, uh, Philip? I did it in Barcelona. And in my Barcelona. Which uh, university? Uh, Oberta de Catalonia. Mm -hmm. uh, my, uh, my the thesis director was a, a gentleman from UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, very respected Jewish uh, professor called Monroe Price. Ah, Monroe uh, Price, sure. Yes, I know him yeah, well. yeah. Uh, and my thesis is being published by Roman at Littlefield uh, on framing the Friday sermon in Jordan. Hmm. Philip, are you, may I ask a personal question? Yeah, please. Are, are you Palestinian or uh, Jordanian? I'm, uh, I'm originally I'm a Moabite Jordanian. Uh, I was born in Jerusalem in 1962, and I lived there until 1977. Hmm. Then I so moved you know to some Hebrew. I can read Hebrew, yeah. I can read Great. Hebrew. Uh, I can understand some. I speak Spanish, English, Arabic, and some Japanese. I lived in Japan for four years, hmm. uh, studying also. Uh, yeah, I have some published studies about media, media accountability, and media studies. I did the last study, it took me a year long, about the uprooting of Jews from the Arab countries. Uh, but it's unpublished, you know. Uh, but so, I mean, the, yeah. Yeah, please. Philip, why don't you write me offline? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll connect you to relevant people, both in the conflict media field and, uh, and more generally on, in the, on the two issues you spoke about, about the the, the uh, reason Palestinians fled and uh, the question of Jews in Arab countries and their and uh, their emigration. Yep. Actually, I did write to Professor Frankel from the history department. I think. Miriam I was, she's a lady. She's a yeah. She's professor. irrelevant. She's, oh, yes. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I think. I mean, she's a great. She's a wonderful scholar, but not close. You should look up Hillel Cohen. Hello, Hello Cohen. Cohen. Okay. And you should look up Eli Pude. Uh -huh. You should look up Ifat Maoz. I, well, you write me and I'll, I'll give you these yeah. names. Can I have your uh, uh, 
uh, email. Yeah, it's email, please. Yeah, you can find just using my name and Achim Blandheim. You'll find it on the university site. Yeah, okay. the email is simply M Bland, M B L O N D. At yeah, H U J I. That's Hebrew University Jerusalem Israel. H U J I dot A C Academia dot I L Israel. Okay, Menachem. Uh... What's the Blondheim. family name, please? Blondheim, okay. Blondheim, B-L-O-N-D-H-E-I-M. Okay. Okay, I'll write to you, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Philip. Thank you. Sadi, do you, sorry. do you have any specific questions about the program or what's your background? Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in the program? Lenisha? Are you talking? Sorry. Lenisha? Can you open your speaker and tell us uh, a little more about yourself? You're on mute. Hello? There we are. Okay, it keeps cutting in and out. I'm actually interested in Israel studies because I've been studying the scriptures a lot. And I know that you know Israel is God's people and that, as you mentioned, it's the capital of Jerusalem, and eventually it will be the capital of the world once, you know, things started happening. So I was wondering if you all actually follow, like, the scriptures and your religious studies. That's what I wasn't for sure of what you teach. Uh, Lanisha, we have studies in uh, a, a master's program, possibly, in Judaism or in the ancient Middle East, the early Middle East would be a little more fitting because our focus is actually modern Israel, not Israel in the future and not Israel in the ancient past. And I think the future and very ancient past are, are more relevant to these interests. And we do have alternative programs that focus on them. Okay, so you said it would be Middle Eastern? No, no, not the Middle Eastern program. I would think, Nomi, uh, I, I think either Jewish studies, which would have a very strong emphasis uh, on ancient history or archaeology, which is the past, or uh, uh, we, also have a Bible, we also have a Bible studies program. A Bible studies program. That would probably, make, that may be the best uh, avenue for, your, for advancing your interests. If you write and to so the studies focus on politics, we focus on contemporary Israel politics, uh, 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 geography, sociology, the wars that are going on, the wars that go on. So, but uh, not but not future wars and not Armageddon, Armageddon and not the uh, ancient uh, period. Okay, so more like the stuff that I see on the news on these world news. Yes, right, right, correct, correct. If you look in the chat, I put at the top, there's the admissions team email address, gradmiss at sabion.hugi.ac.il. You're welcome to write to them about other programs that we offer. Um, also in the admissions online, apply online. You'll see, if you click on the link, you'll see the other programs on offer, the Bible studies, the Jewish studies, we offer an archaeology program um, that might be more suited, as Professor Blondheim mentioned. So definitely worth checking out and definitely contact our admissions team. They'd be, they'd be very happy to point you in the right direction in terms of your field. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any more questions? Yes. Okay, good seeing you again, Bennett. Pleasure meeting you, Philip and uh, Vanisha, and Nomi, of course. Yes, well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, you're welcome to leave the room and join the main room. Um, yep, okay. thank you. Okay, be well, thank you, Bennett. Thank, thank you, you sure, no, thank you. Thank you for